Hello, investors. It's Don Vanden Board, Senior Portfolio Manager with Revere Asset Management. Today is Tuesday, February 8th, 4.48 p.m. Eastern Time, coming to you from St. Augustine Beach, Florida, with tonight's Revere Market Insight video. State of the market in an uptrend since 131 when we had a follow-through day on the indexes and some participation by leaders. If you check over here on the trend gauge, you can see leadership. We upgraded from downtrend or bearish to neutral on February 1st, the day after that. Uh, short term, we were struggling to get above the 21-day exponential moving average on all of the five major indexes that we track. Medium term, we're even further below the 50-day moving average. So those are still in a bearish slash downtrend posture. Long term, we're neutral. Uh, several indexes below the 200-day. Uh, the Dow and the S&P 500 continue to stay above, uh, so we're neutral there. Uh, really, the story of the market is we're stuck in a um, – we bounced off the bottom, and now we're stuck in uh, a little bit of a range, and I'm going to show a comparison back with uh, April of 2020 after COVID – uh, to see if something uh, – to show, first of all, what happened then and to see if what's going on now is a valid comparison we'll, uh, we'll know in the, in the days to come. So what happened today? Four straight day where the S&P 500 is stuck below the 21-day moving average, which is acting as resistance, yet above the 200-day moving average, which is acting as support. All in all, pretty good day. Uh, we were red in the morning after the open. In fact, we had a, a mild negative open, uh, went further lower, but then uh, bounced, had a strong morning to mid-afternoon rally, pulled back in the afternoon, and then a strong close before a little bit of a give back the last couple minutes, but we'll certainly take the action. It was positive. G6, our composite six growth uh, ETFs that we track up 1.26% on the day, S&P 500 up 0.8%, NASDAQ 100 up 1.1%, Dow up 1.1%, Midcaps up 1.9%, Russell up 1.6%. Of diversified worldwide 60-40 stock bond portfolio up 0.35% on the day as bond yields rose worldwide, which means prices came down. Uh, that's why that lagged. And Grotection, our uh, in-house flagship portfolio, up 0.65% on the day. We have about uh, the same exposure as the S&P 500. Uh, we've got uh, seven positions, only one of them in tech as we're uh, – oh, I'm sorry, only one of them is a true growth stock as we're – uh, trying to stay out of the way of uh, growth stocks, which are getting sold on strength uh, and bought on weakness. And really, everything in the market is getting sold on strength, bought on weakness. But uh, we're fishing in the ponds that are a little bit less volatile and are showing more relative strength. So let's get to the charts. But first, let's get to uh, the team here at Revere. What we do is trend follow. We follow the market higher when it's in an uptrend. Sideways, we pull back a little bit. Downtrend, we get the heck out of the way. And uh, it seems like a common sense approach. People do it with uh, pretty much every other facet of their life. When things go negative, you try to improve it. Uh, when things are going well, you enjoy it. So uh, you're interested in this approach, email any of us. Dan, Tim, Hunter, Mural, Alex, or Don at RevereAsset.com or call 855-REAL-WEALTH. That's 855-732-5932. Uh, let's get to the charts here uh, with the S&P 500, and let's bring up the tail of the tape, which is uh, kind of a big overview with a couple of rules, and it's uh, kind of the guidelines of what we follow tells us where the market is, tells us where what we'll do as it changes. So in an uptrend, as I mentioned, continue to see the following headwinds, strong U.S. dollar, uh, COVID, uh, there's a new variant of Omicron out supposedly, but I, I think that uh, the world seems to have had enough of the lockdowns, et cetera. Uh, very clearly battling inflation, upcoming Fed taper, and rising interest rates. 
Uh, sentiment, nothing really uh, jumps out at me, but uh, we've always got a bull and a bear case right now. That 131 follow through day, we want that to hold uh, and leaders to continue em to emerge. It's tenuous. In a true bull market, you'll have stocks breaking out and going higher, but we still continue to be in a sell to strength by weakness market. Of course, the bear case is if the uh, follow through day fails and the S&P breaks back below the 200 day moving average. So what I came into the day today, I wanted to watch, where are we? Same thing for the last couple of days, S&P against the 21 overhead resistance, continue to act as resistance, S&P versus the uh, below 200 day moving average has been acting at support, continues to act at support. Uh, so my note, Still a sell to strength by weakness market, very true. Bottom line, uh, today's the fourth day between the 21 day and the 200 day, and how that resolves itself dictates the next action that we'll take uh, on the market. In the portfolios today, we trimmed some SSO, and um, we've been doing this into the declining 21 day moving average. Uh, it's, uh, it's been pretty consistent when you get up there that's it. The market runs out of steam uh, very clearly, certainly for the last four days. If that changes, we'll take a different approach, but we did trim some with a very small gain. Uh, and as long as we hold on to this 200-day moving average to the downside, uh, we'll continue to participate in the market. But as you know, um, I'm very fond of saying, say it all the time, probably too much, risk picks up big time below the 200-day moving average, but we're still holding out above that. Let's go to the NASDAQ 100. Charts look similar, moving averages slightly different. You can see the move up off the bottom. Uh, and then this four day island. Now let's go back to uh, right after COVID. Let's go to July of 2020. And I wanna do a comparison and show you what I'm looking at here. So here's the COVID bottom and then we bounced five days up and then we had a gap down. So this is kind of similar to what we're looking at right now. We're under the 200 day moving, really more on the NASDAQ 100. So we're under the 200 day moving average and this gap down, we had this three day island. Uh, it wasn't clear that it was an island on the third day until we gapped up on April 4th and had a, a sorry, April 6th and had a strong follow through day. But April 1st, 2nd and 3rd, I was certain we were gonna break down and go lower and test new lows. I won't say I was certain. I, I always have an expectation. Uh, my expectation was that we were going to go lower after we failed at the 21. We didn't go lower. And I quickly changed my stance when we uh, blasted off with this gap up and got above the 21 day moving average. And you can see what a nice fruitful rally that read to. So, so here's the move down, the bounce off the bottom, the pullback, this three day island, which is sitting there by itself until we gapped above it. Now let's go back to current day. Uh, here's the move down. You've got your bounce up and then a gap down. It's a four day island as of right now. We're not going lower. We're not going higher. So um, it's the 200 day overhead for the NASDAQ 100 and, and 350 on the bottom continues to hold. So uh, if we can, if we follow the model of what happened after COVID, uh, we'll gap up and out and continue to rally. If we don't, it's very clear what we're watching, a breakdown below the lows of the last four days in the NASDAQ 100 or a break below the 200 day moving average uh, on the S&P 500. But um, uh, right now, this is just, you know, I'm calling it an island because it's gapped down and we haven't filled the gap uh, from this four day move up off the bottom. Declining 21 is acting as resistance underneath the 200 again support on the bottom, very similar on the NASDAQ 100, except we're talking about the 200 day and the 350 level underneath. But um, strong close today. Let's take a look at this on a 15 minute chart. Uh, here's the island, the move down, down, up, down, down, up. Uh, it's very clear what we're looking at. The last four days, highs and lows, resistance and support. Uh, what happens if we break above that? And then if we back test it and hold, very bullish, very important. If we fall back into the range, not so bullish. If we break below the bottom bearish, it's very clear. So you can see here with the various levels on the S&P 500, here's today's close, 
ran into the declining 21. Today's close overhead declining 21 continues to act as strong resistance. That's really the bottom line here fourth day between the 21 and the 200. So that's what we're focused on. Let's go ahead to the Dow Jones Industrial Average now. A uh, little bit more strength actually challenging the high uh, of February 2nd, the day after the follow through day and the 200 is acting as support on the Dow. Mid caps had a strong day today. Got back above the 21, first close above the 21. So that's the first of the major indexes to have a close above the 21 uh, since we did have that uh, close last week on the S&P. Still, we're, you can see the 50 is dropping through the 200, 50 the red line, uh, the black line is the 200. So that'll be resistance as, uh, should we come up into it. But for now, uh, decent day today on mid caps. Let's go to small caps. Uh, into the 21, 50 has broken below the 200. This is the, this is the direct opposite of the way we want the moving averages to be stacked. Small caps have been uh, really lagging for quite a while now. So those are the indexes. So let's take a look at some individual stocks. In fact, let's go through the portfolio and what we own right now. Apple, one of the first things we bought after we came off the bottom. Uh, nice bounce off the 50-day moving average today. Uh, CF, CF Industries, uh, chemical, CF Industries, a uh, chemical stock, uh, leader, relative strength, certainly intact. Harsh pullback today, perfect bounce off the 21, just like we want to see. Devon, these were the first three that we bought. Uh, Devon, three day pullback. Energy, all of energy has pulled back over the last couple of days. Uh, especially the uh, producers XOP, but bounced on the 21 just the way we need to. Very clear that that's what uh, is supporting Devon DVN. And then the recent buys that we had, uh, Bros was buy number four, very volatile, failed breakout yesterday. Hindsight, I should have took some, uh, should have sold the breakout. I mean, selling strength is what I'm talking about, but uh, we were very strong yesterday morning. Uh, before we faded, Bros continues to find support at the rising 8 EMA. Decent day today. Uh, and then two that we bought on Monday, Nucor. Nice day today. Uh, the pattern that we were looking at is volume on the move up after earnings, lower volume on the pullback into the 50 day. Bounce there. Uh, nice day today. Uh, BX was the second stock that was bought on Monday. Uh, expected a bounce off the eight yesterday, but we did break below that. However, we bounced at the 21 and the 50 today, so we're down a couple percent on this. But uh, today's low and the 50 day and the 21 day certainly should act as support, and financials are uh, looking pretty good. I got three or four alerts today uh, on gold stocks breaking above resistance, so I went with the strongest one, including an alert on GDX, but yesterday, Newmont had a very nice day above average volume off this collection of moving averages here, the 200 and the 21. Didn't give any of it back today, so when I started getting the alerts late in the afternoon, I went ahead and took the position in Newmont. Uh, nice stop out here, uh, very close to the moving averages as they raise, and should we pull back, it should act as support. Uh, but GDX, uh, certainly one of the alerts that I got today, following through up through the 21 and the 50 day uh, off of this 30 level, which we undercut a couple times here, but it's really acting as support. Uh, this still not a good chart below the declining 200 day moving average, the shorter term moving averages looking better and turning up. And uh, I turn to the leader very clearly Newmont. Uh, GFI was another one that I got an alert on today. Uh, low price stock, but again, two days up above the moving averages, forming a flat base. Uh, this one looks pretty darn good too. AU, another one that I had been monitoring, but had been lagging as of late, but this one also above the moving averages. So looks like some money flowing into gold stocks. Let's see if that continues. Uh, let's see, that's going to wrap it. So as always, curious for your feedback, you can email me, DonnaReveraAsset.com. The phone is 855-REAL-WEALTH. The key remains, bottom line here, fourth day between the 21 and the 200 day. Let's see uh, what happens when we follow the uh, breakout like we did in COVID after that little island, intermediate island that was put in on a pullback after the move off the low. Uh, or will we break down below the 200-day moving average? It's very key.
or it's very clear uh, what we're watching. So that's going to wrap it. Ending up uh, Tuesday, February 8th, this is Don Vandenborg with Just the Facts. Thanks for listening and have a great day.